Alrighty, welcome back, back everybody, and uh, phenomenal routine by the Shining Starlets. Hope you guys enjoyed that. Great job, ladies. That was really great. Thank you very much. One of my favorite songs, too. I love Fort Minor. So, and uh, here we are, week seven. What's up, guys? Hey, hey. I was ready to talk about some football. Get the show on the road. Now, oh. cor correct me <laughs> if I'm wrong, math-wise, but ain't this like the halfway point in the season? That's right, yeah, 14 Something like weeks. This. Oh, yeah, my gosh. 14, 14, 7, you know, that's numbers. Right. Math. Southerners, yeah. math. Exactly. Difficult things roll, to do. <laughs> roll tight. So, but thank oh. you to the Shining Starlets, the sponsor um, of our game of the week, for spending some time with us. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. It, also, um, for those who are here at the show in front of us on the stage, there are red and pink boxes. Those are Pulse t-shirts made by another one of our sponsors. You play ball like a girl. So we have two of our sponsors getting very involved with the show, and we always appreciate that. Um, anybody else wants to get involved with the show? Door is always open. Just simply have to ask. Thank you for Caden for hitting me up. We talked about doing this earlier in the week, and it was, it was a treat, definitely. Always nice to see us able to give you guys something back for the support that you guys <laughs> Absolutely. give come, us. Come on up, V. Don't be shy. Get, come you, on, that, v. get you that gift. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pull out a no, chair. No, no, no. The, the, yeah, the pink and blue ladies, that is just to, to designate the male and female shirts. So, yeah. Right. Dash is all up on it. Blue. Yep, she's posting up right there. Exactly. But we had a, a very good week last week. We're going to the Players Club Week 6 review. Had the Cobras and the Dolphins. That game was forfeited, so nothing to talk about there. So we'll get to move on. We had the Panthers 65-7 to win over the Mustangs. The Packers 31-21 to win over the Eagles. The Cowboys 33-21 to win over the Patriots. The, Jack the Yellow Jackets 21-7 to win over the Warriors. And the Falcons 46-0 to win over the Bulldogs. See, I'm kind of, as the, um, I was out of town last weekend. So as all the scores were starting to be posted, there were some, I guess you would say, upsets if our picks count as who is really favored in games. It, it was... It was a really exciting week, as you see. The middle of the weekend was a lot of close games. So a lot of good stuff to talk about as we go through the Players Club Week 6 review. And we say Cobras and Dolphins, that went um, as a forfeit. So nothing to talk about there. But the Panthers, 65-7 to win over the Mustangs, went pretty much as we expected. We said, um, you know, we felt bad for whatever team was going to get the Panthers after... Um, their loss to the Titans. The Mustangs drew that task, um, but you know Panthers did pretty much what I expected them to do. They came out, they won, they won big. Um, I had a lot of takeaways from the Mustangs. Um, Mustangs were able to put seven points on the board, and that and Caden was named the player of the week. So, I mean, the player of the game, excuse me. I'm already getting way ahead of myself. <laughs> so, um, you guys have anything else? Hashtag conspiracy add, theory. I know. <laughs> you guys have anything <laughs> else to say? And also, thank you, Love Forger, joining us here. Owner of the Mystic Bills. We are at the Mystic Bills field, so definitely don't want to, to overshadow that. But as far as the Panthers and the Mustangs go, anything? I know Psyche like were out there. I think you had a pick six. Am I am I right? Anything? Yeah, I think I did. So you finally point. got back on on track. Well, I mean, I've had interceptions between now and then, but I, I haven't had any sixes. No. Yeah, you've, you've touched you've touched the sacred painted turf that is the end zone. Six points never tastes so sweet. Right. But, <laughs> Tom, any thoughts? On I'm that just case? I'm looking at the mob of people that just ran behind stage. Yeah, that's fine. To... <laughs> It was just hilarious Tom's to see. Tom's fault. I like that sign. Thumbs up she on that. Drunk one day. Oh, boy. Wait, hold on. i got to look on the signs here. Oh, jeez. That it's happened. <laughs> That's great. That like college game. See, this is kind of what we wanted when we envisioned yeah, this. Not yeah. just to get the uh, you know the, the <laughs> house and all the nice stuff that the Bills have behind us, but to get some fans back there with some signs. Kind of a college game day type feel. Absolutely. So, just so a relaxed, like fun environment. And so that's Panthers exactly what... come away. Easy win. Guys didn't stress too much in that game. I'd say it's like 65 to seven over the Mustangs. That was the early game on Saturday. Then we go to the late game, which was a little bit different, a little tighter game, and what I would consider as one of the uh, upsets of the weekend. The Packers 31 to 21 win over the Eagles, where Jared was named the player of the game. It's like you were on hand for that. So what'd you see? 
Um, I, <clears throat> I saw a, uh, a Packers offense, I guess, finally, uh, you know, kind of come of age. Um, they, they found a spot. I won't, I won't say that it was a complete offensive success on the day. They, they really late in the game just found a deep route that worked and they just kept going right back to it. And, um, it, you know, it, I tell you one thing I don't believe that we had seen yet that, that I will remember about this game is I don't know this season that we have seen a team come from behind in the fourth quarter to win. And, uh, and that team, the, uh, the Packers did that. So, um, that was, that much was impressive. They kept their poise, um, you know, and I, I've been as high on the Eagles as, as anybody. Uh, I think they were missing a couple of starters, but, uh, you know, I, I can't, can't use that as an excuse. You know, you got to play with the hand that's dealt. And uh, overall, you know, they, they, the Eagles had a chance to get back in it. And they drove and just could not quite finish the drive. So, um, so congratulations to the Packers on, uh, on this win that kind of, kind of rights the ship a little bit for their season. Um, you know, I don't know that I would wish them or hope that they're going to have that much luck. Sorry, I'm only a little bit distracted by the small army of people behind me. Um, <laughs> But yeah, you know, so I mean, their reward for getting their season on track is a date with the Dolphins. So, um, you know, that that much is is going to change, come back. So, you know, that that's pretty much my review of the take. Congratulations to them for sure for a good win this week and uh, and and good luck going forward. I really want to pause for a minute and say, Tom, exactly what are your tensions with yeah. this young lady in question? Just kidding. I know enough about <laughs> Tom to know that I don't need to ask that on the air. I have no clue. <laughs> Crazy. I didn't know it was changed to Tom. <clears throat> so, yes, uh, <laughs> the Packers coming away with their 31 to 21 win over the Eagles. Jared was named the player of the game there. So then we go to Sunday, the early game, another one that we didn't we didn't pick right, I guess. The Cowboys 33 to 21 win over the Patriots. I don't know. I think I remember, we might have been split on this. But uh, yeah, I th I think I called the Patriots. I know Cam. I think no, Cam wasn't here. He wasn't here. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I I, I feel like it, it 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 was leaning the the Patriots um the Patriots way definitely there but billy was named the player of the game congratulations to billy in large part because of his game clinching interception and tom you were there absolutely tell us about it um <clears throat> it was a uh, it was a well fought game uh, tooth and nail um both teams battling it out and the uh the patriots had made it just about all the way down and uh, I mean, just like you know, just like in the NFL, you know, during the Super Bowl, you know, they were right there about to score, and just Billy, Billy came up with it and grabbed that, grabbed that interception, turned the game around, and saved. And I am 100% comfortable in saying this: he saved the games for you know, game for the Cowboys, and that's instantly right there. I knew, and Jeff was poking me in teams because he was streaming. It, that right there got him in my mind for player of the game. And then he comes around and does another interception for a pick six and then runs it in for a touchdown. So, I mean, with it was just – it was one of those games that you really enjoyed. You know, what, sorry, um, there's a sign behind me that says I smell like tuna. <laughs> it was just one of those games that you enjoy watching from start to finish. Every play mattered. And uh, and in the end, Cowboys won at 33 to you know to 21, and, and Billy with with a very well earned, um, hard deserved uh, player of the game nomination. Congratulations to Billy there, and congratulations to the Cowboys. Absolutely. You know, we were talking about you know the deep threat of the Patriots, and at the end of the day, you know the interceptions by the Patriots, you know trying to use that passing game. Or ultimately, what is their downfall? Billy, congratulations, congratulations to the Cowboys. 33-21 victors over the Patriots. Late game. Game that was a must-win tabbed by Rayon when he was here. Psych. Everybody saying that the Yellow Jackets had to find a way. They needed this game, or the playoff pitcher was, was slipping out of their hands. And the Yellow Jackets come in with all the pressure, with all the must-win that you need, and they come out with a 21-7 win over the Warriors. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, Scooter was named the Tamed. player of the game. Tamed. Yep. Tamed, sorry. Tamed was oh, named yeah, the player tamed. of the game there. Bad Matt. 
I even told you. Oh, I'm sorry. I've, I tried to do this from memory, and clearly not as good as I thought <laughs> it was. Say, I, I'm sorry, fellas. Sure I, I got your back. I all of the videos. I got your back. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Well, I have it on the pole, right? I just didn't have it in the note card, right? But anyway, Psych, you were there. At night. Uh, yellow, yellow Jackets needed the win. Yellow Jackets got the win. What did you see? Um, well, I, I saw a team that knew they had to win, um, and they definitely pushed forward and, and got the win. Um, it was overall an impressive performance. Um, I'm going by memory here. It's been a long week. I'm getting ready for spring break coming up, so my mind's in a million places. So I, I will give you what I remember about it. I, I know that it, we did. You were correct. It was a desperation shot for the um, for the, the Yellow Jackets. I wish I could tell them they were out of hot water. Uh, my honest opinion is that they've got several more must-win games coming up on the schedule. So, you know, they've, they've handled one. They did what they had to do. They're still alive, you know, for sure. Um, you know, they, they completed passes when they needed to, and they, they just made the stops. They overall, I would think the defense, uh, the Yellow Jackets defense was just a little bit more power than what the Warriors could handle uh, on that particular game. And I think that for sure showed up in the second half. I'm not sure if the Warriors scored in the second half at all. But, um, you know, a pretty well-rounded, uh, you know, performance by the Yellow Jackets. They did what they needed to do and got the win. They live on to keep fighting you know, halfway through the season. So, so they're doing everything they can to make sure they're in that top four. Yep. Good stuff. Congratulations to the Yellow Jackets and Tame. I'm sorry, not Scooter. See, I don't even know names anymore. But um, congratulations to the Yellow Jackets. Must win, and they got it. 21-7 to over the Warriors. Going into the Monday night game, Falcons against the Bulldogs. Falcons come out with a 46-0 to win over the Bulldogs. Tom, this is your team. Tell us about it. Well, you know, in the in the beginning of the show, uh, well, in the in our last show, I I lost a lot of faith in the uh, in the Falcons, and I actually picked, um, you know, I I picked the um, the Bulldogs to win over the uh, over the Falcons, you know, and after some conversation, I was like, well, you know, you're you were right, Matt, you're you're right, and that game, I I'm trying not to be too terribly offensive. Um, the Falcons played a great game. The Bulldogs, however, you could tell that it was definitely he had. Or, I mean, he's had some roster changes. Am I not? Am I? Am I mistaken? Or is that has been no, in roster for a little while? Uh, you're correct. Okay. Yeah, because I mean that it was highly unorganized. Um, it, it was just. It was really tough to watch. Um, a lot of mistakes were happening everywhere on all sides of the field. I look up and there's you, you know Baldev's got multiple receivers wide open, you know, streaking towards the end zone, uh, and Baldev was on fire. You know, he was getting the passes where he needed to be. Um, there was not much pass rush. It was just, it was a Falcons game the entire the entire time. Um, and I mean, it's it, it, was, it was very, very visible that the Bulldogs have a lot of new players, um, so I'm not trying to, to bash the Bulldogs whatsoever, but it's just you know, talking about that game, it was just a it was a tough game for the Bulldogs, I could tell. Every snap, um, you know, w was a difficult one for them, I believe. Uh, just yeah, You can yeah. kind of see the growing pains. Absolutely. Um, miscommunication, um, you know, looking for the, uh, the possession circle as opposed to the ball. A lot of runs, a lot of handoffs. Um, or, I mean, it was, just, it was just blown assignments by the Bulldogs' defense. But, you know, it's one of those things... You know, you've had a couple of forfeits. You, you've got a group of people together now. Hopefully this is the group that you have for the remainder of the season. I'm going to talk about this one because I was actually at this game, so yep. I should have some stuff to say about this one. <laughs> but Yeah, please, um, please dig me out of this hole I just dug. Yeah, but, I mean, you know, the Bulldogs, you know, the, I mean, it's 46-0 to zero against, you know, against the Falcons. Hey, what are you going to do but improve? That's it. I mean, y you've been – absolutely. You know, you've been out of commission for a while. I mean, you're not. None of us expected you to win. I mean, not, just putting it bluntly. I mean, it was picked across the board except for Tom immediately that you know the Falcons were going to win the game because what I saw from the Bulldogs was what I was expecting to see. I was hoping to not, but it's what I thought was going to happen until you get the, you get the time, you get the people in there. 
you get your defense figured out, you have everyone playing their assignment, playing their position correctly, and that takes time. That doesn't, that's not just a weak thing. That's, that's, that's a process that Rhino now has to take with his new team. And he has some, some talented people, some people who have been around for a while. There were glimpses where the Bulldogs had some things going, but you know turnovers hurt them. They threw a lot of interceptions. They gave the ball away a ton in this game. So, you know, play smarter on offense, shore up your defense, sh kind of shorten the game, get it more in your control. And, you know, you look at it, hey, 46 to 0. Well, next week I just want to score a touchdown, get a field goal. Let's say you not give up 46 points depending on, you know, who your who your next opponent is, which I mean, you're off next week on this upcoming weekend. So, you know, take this time, take this bye week, take, take this, you know, Easter weekend and, and and improve yourself. Find the weaknesses, address them. Hey, ask for help if you want it, but th there there's there's an opportunity there. But the uh, Falcons come away with a 46 to 0 win over the Bulldogs. Jambo Gant, the player of the game, played an extraordinary game, was all over the field. Absolutely. Um, so definitely congratulations to him. I'm very happy to have named him the player of the game there. So that is the Players Club Week 6 review. Cobras, Dolphins, forfeit, uh, win to the Dolphins. Yep, yep. Uh, Panthers 65-7 <clears throat> over the Mustangs. Packers 31-21 over the Eagles. Cowboys 33-21 over the Patriots. Yellow Jackets 21-7 over the Warriors. And the Falcons 46-0 over the Bulldogs. So Absolutely. What a, it, was a good, it was a good week of football. It was. It was a lot was of competitive really games. I mean, you know, the, the whole middle part of the week was up for grabs. You know, the Packers, Eagles, Cowboys, Patriots, Yellow Jackets, Warriors – Majority of those games could have gone either way. A couple of decisions here and there. The Panthers game and the Falcons game played out pretty much how, you know, most of us figured that they would. But like we said, and you can tell by all the craziness behind us, we're at the Bills field. We have Love with her. We have it with us. We haven't heard from her. Love, how are you doing? Thank you for letting us spend some time here with you and your team tonight. Thank you for joining us, Dan. Now, Love, I, I have one very, very important, serious question for you right now, and that is, how many of these <laughs> lunatics behind the set are yours? <laughs> Quite a few of them, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> we give a cam uh, shot back there. Yeah, while you're it is a requirement now when you come to the Bills for your name to be Lieutenant Dan. Right. <laughs> I want to know if that's a thing, too. Oh, it looks like it, doesn't it? It yep. does, it does. A shout out. I have a... Uh... I have a uh, deaf sheep here with me right now. Howdy. Yep, I'm sitting here right next door. What's up, Dad? What's up, man? Uh, we're getting two. You're, here, you're, you're like the the voice from heaven. You don't see his avatar, but he's <laughs> that's here. right. Two interviews <laughs> for the price of one. That's what exactly. we're doing this week. <laughs> we can just get to do it all through, through one microphone. We get to handle it all. So, yeah. love, you have been around yeah. SL football for a long freaking time. We know that. We know yeah, from the very beginning. you have had a rough go of it. How does it feel, and let's just be honest, to uh -huh. finally have a team that has a legitimate chance to not just win a buttload of games, but a team that a lot of people are looking at as a front runner to maybe win the entire thing? These guys are awesome. They're awesome. And it's, and it's great to have a team um, like them. No, don't get me wrong. Everybody that's been a bill before, you know, you know, I always back them, and I always back them. But these guys are awesome, and they love to play football, and that's what it's all about, right? That is. One thing that I like to see is is owners like yourself, people who have been in this league for so long and have had struggles, um, you know, to 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 finally get you know that breakthrough season or that breakthrough team. And, you know, just congratulations to you. Great job on whatever it is you had to do, sell your soul to the devil, whatever, <laughs> to get this team here because you have a winner. Uh, and it, and like I said, you know, the, the Bills have been around for a long time, and it's, it's really – and I don't mean to be rude to any past Bills, but this is the first time, this is the first season that we can say the Bills are winners. And I mean yeah, the, big, big winners, the, true winners. The Bills so congratulations have been around before football um, – before we even started the first practice, I had the bill, you know, back in the SFL days. Oh, I was there. Um, with Ronnie. I remember. 
That was yeah, man. How far we have come since that yeah. day to now. <laughs> I'm telling you, these new guys, they just they don't understand. They complain about they, this yeah, they don't or get something. it. No. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. We did double balls. We did four hour games. Duck walking. <laughs> it was the worst. That was, was the, the thing. <laughs> Yeah. At one point, you had to way. you had to reattach your ball in between every play that you were blocked. Yeah, because you couldn't <laughs> yeah, stop I running. About that. Yeah, <laughs> see, about that. and if you were blocked, the play was over for you. Anyway. Yeah, you so forget you it for sixteen seconds. <laughs> but uh, but love, just take me into your mind. Take how I mean. How, honestly, though, you, we're kind of talking over you. I know that, but but how does it feel? I mean, I know you're proud of these guys. I know you're happy that they're here. But honestly, how this season as opposed to past seasons, you know, how how is it different for you as the owner setting back, seeing the product on the field as opposed to what you've had um, all the years before now? You know, in the past, you know, we would, you know, the Bills never gave up, but we would go to a game and we automatically knew that everybody felt like, oh, we're just going to beat them there just to push over, you know? And it feels great to be able to go to a game and be in the game, you know? And people don't walk in there and go, oh, we're going to beat the Bills. This is, this is no problem. People wonder, huh, how are we going to be able to beat the Bills? And that's great to see. Well, I'm happy for you. I'm happy for this team. I'm I'm happy that you let us come and spend some time with you. I'm sorry about last no, week, by the way. No problem. I'm sorry. I felt really, really bad. And I was going to change it, but then I was like, well, they're doing a lighting the way event. So it's like, well, we'll just see if Loves will maybe forgive me. If Love will forgive me just this once. And she did. So, so well, I you appreciate know, yeah. That. And you know, your first thought, well, my first thought was, yeah, they forgot about us. So yeah, it's the Bills, right? Because <laughs> that's what normally happens. You know? yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> But no, it, it wasn't an intentional thing. As soon as you IM me, I was like, "Well, God dang, I really I, we were supposed to go there, but we got here and a great turnout." And thank you. And the Starlets came. So see, right. hey, they had an event, but we brought the Starlets, so we right. made it up to you. There you, had, you go. You had a good time. Yeah, you did. Yes, you did. <laughs> we did. Well, we're gonna have you hang out with us. We're gonna we have three games, so this is gonna this isn't gonna take us long. But so the Shining Starlets game of the week. Next week we have three games. Friday, Packers against the Dolphins. Saturday, Mustangs, Eagles. Sunday, no games. It's Easter. Happy Easter. Have a good time with your family. Eat a lot of food, which I know I'm going to do. And Monday will be the Cobras against the Titans. So we look at these three games. Game of the week, I think it's kind of evident as it's going to be. Uh, Mustangs versus the Eagles. So the Shining Starlets game of the week for week seven will be... Mustangs versus the Eagles. So we're going to start off Friday, and Syke will have you talk about this game because me and Tom are going to be in it. Packers against the Dolphins. What do you think? Give us some thoughts, well, at least for a minute. Yeah, this is the first, first y'all's first actual game that you will get to play. Um, you know, barring something unseen, since you guys played us, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. We since yep. you, since yeah. We played you guys. Yeah. So, so my warning was originally for the. Um, for whoever it was that forfeited on y'all, the the Cobras maybe, but um, yeah, that warning's going to the the Packers. You know, I, yeah, congrats to them. And we were just talking about earlier they'd gotten that win, and that's something that they definitely needed. You know, t for for their sake moving forward. But I mean, that honeymoon's going to end in a big way. If you if you're asking my opinion, um, it's going to end in a big big way uh, this coming coming week. And um, and I would say that about any team in the league, just about that was playing you guys. Uh, so, um, yeah, I, I just think that's going to go about like what we're expecting. Um, you know, so hats off to them, best of luck, but, uh, I kind of don't give them a whole lot of hope in this one. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to just getting back on the field. Like you said, we had, you know, the Bulldogs and that was a forfeit. And then the Cobras had some last second, um, you know, changes to their, to their lineup. Um, that resulted in a forfeit for us. Um, just really looking forward to getting back on the field um, yeah, out there at the UFL field in front of the fans, having a good time. Tickets are on sale. Go to our marketplace. Name was Plug because I can do that, and, uh, and buy your tickets to the uh, to the to the game. Um, we still have quite a few available, but we're not going to spend a lot of time talking about the game because that's <laughs> that's going to be time. Sorry, I just I just glanced out and saw Hefe out there dancing. Well, that shouldn't shock you. So then we're going to go to what's going to be the Shining Starlets game of the week for week seven. Mustangs against the Eagles. 
All right, Tom, what do you think is going to happen in this game? I think the Mustangs are going to show out again. I think they're going to come in and uh, and not really surprise us because we, you know, we've seen you know what they're capable of. Uh, they've got the uh, you know they've got that loss against the Panthers, but you know we all kind of knew. You know, you know, it's like a kind of a David Goliath versus you know game right there. So you know they're coming down, uh, gonna go against the Eagles, and I, I, I'm gonna give it to the Mustangs. I think the Mustangs are gonna show up and show out and come, you know, ready to play. Like, um, the game is gonna come down to the Eagles secondary's ability to stop. Uh, is it Key or Kai? I don't want yeah, to mispronounce key. key. Uh, their their ability to stop key and Dre. Um, you know they split them one on each side, uh, so both sides of their secondary is going to get tested. Again, we just saw them kind of get. You know, I guess uh, I'm okay in saying an upset uh, to the Packers, um, largely because of that secondary. So uh, if they write that ship, um, I don't think that much has changed. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, the, the Mustangs have gotten better from week one. Have they gotten better enough to overcome the 35, 36, whatever it was, nothing? Uh, I think it'll be a closer game, but I'm still leaning to the Eagles. Yeah, this game is the only game where teams will play twice, if I'm not mistaken, this season. So Mustangs have an opportunity to, to like you said, to, to right the ship. But I'm kind of I'm leaning on the side of kind of what you were saying, Psych. Just, I, I don't know, like, the Mustangs have come a long way from that point, but the Eagles have as well. Um, you know, I don't know. I, it's it's going to come down to the quarterback play in this game because I think both defenses are kind of the same. I think they have their strengths and their weaknesses kind of in the same area. I think you know both are susceptible to being exposed if you can if you can do the right thing. All I know is that if the front four of the Mustangs doesn't come to play, Nathan will just run on them. And then it's going to be a long day. And it's going to be a repeat of maybe not to the extent that we saw the first time they met, but it's it's going to be kind of a semi-showing of that if their front four is not able to contain um, Nathan. Now, if, if the Mustangs are able to get open and, and Marlo's feeling it and she's dropping bombs all over the place and, and Key's on fire like he's been every time I've ever seen him play since he's, since he's come to the Mustangs and Dre's doing what Dre does, you know, then it's going to be a really good day for the Mustangs. But it's going to come down, um, you know, like you said, I think it's going to be the front four for the Mustangs defense and the back four for the Eagles defense because the Mustangs don't run the ball that often. And... You know, so so it's really going to rely heavily on the Eagles' pass defense, and the Eagles are going to run the ball. So the Mustangs' run defense is really going to have to show up, and whichever one of those units performs better is going to going to lead their team um to a victory, in my opinion. There, at the end of the day, I think the Eagles are going to win this game. Um, so that would be my pick for that. So, love, you've been around for a long time. Give us your expert opinion of this game. I'm gonna make you talk. So, or, or you can get DS to do it. I don't care. But some voice right. is coming out of that microphone and telling us about this game. <laughs> okay. Well, um, I've got a feeling that the, the Mustangs are going to make a showing. Uh, I think that um, it's going to be. I think it's a close game. I think the Eagles have a lot of good things going for them. Um, they're improving uh, pretty quickly. Um, but the Mustangs are a good team. I think it's going to be really awesome to see. We're going to see a lot of balls in the air, and uh, it's going to really be a matter of turnovers. Could not agree more. Well, Sunday, we have no game. It's Happy Easter weekend. Everybody don't know who has Good Friday off. I wish I did, but if you do, what's congratulations. The day, what's the day off? Exactly. But um, weekends. I get those, so I can't complain. My bad. I'm heading into a week-long spring break. Don't want to hear it. So I don't want to hear it. So I go sit in the corner. Just okay. saying. So then we will, the we will pick back up with football on Monday uh, with the Cobras against the Titans. And I think this game is going to go about as everybody expects. I think the Titans are going to come in and going to really do whatever they want to um, against the Cobras. Cobras coming off of the forfeit with us. Um, should have enough. I'm not anticipating a forfeit in this from just from having talked uh, with you know the ownership of the Cobras even during our game, um, during our game week kind of leading up to it. So they should have enough. It shouldn't be an issue there. But I think it's Titans win. I think Titans win big because I think they're going to be able to really do kind of you know anything that they want to in this game. Just like what do you think? Um, 
Yeah, I'm I'm right there with you. I don't know for time's sake that I have a whole lot of anything um, new and, and intriguing to add, so I'm going to pass on that one because I think you pretty much said everything that I wanted to say. Okay. Tom, huh. anything different? Anything to add? Uh, not really. <laughs> Everything's on pretty pretty on cue right there. DS love combo. Anything to add? No, I think we're good. Okay. <laughs> I think. Well, I think. I think. I think. Yeah. I mean, we're we the, the Titans are a, an outstanding team, and if the Cobras are going to compete, they're going to have to bring everything they've got, and and then so uh, it's going to be really really hard um, to see them overcoming the the, the Titans as a I do agree. So that's going to uh, end the You Play Ball Like a Girl Week 7 preview. Uh, Friday, Packers against the Dolphins. Saturday, Mustangs against the Eagles. That will be your Shining Starlets game of the week. And Monday, Cobras versus the Titans. So now we head into what everyone has been waiting for. Who's going to be the combatant player of the week for week 6? Um, this has been a pretty close poll, actually, today. I'm not really the top two people. It's kind of been going back and forth. I'm sorry for the delay on having it all posted up, but it is up there if you would like to continue to vote up until the point that it is announced. Also, we're always looking for commentators and streamers, especially if you are interested in becoming a part of the UFL media team, please contact me, contact Tom, Psych, any of the three of us that you see up here, and we will get you what you need to get set up. Um, Psych will be doing kind of a streaming class. We're, when are you going to do that? So like, you can tell them about that. I don't want to steal your thunder. Yeah, well, um, initially, um, and I'll go ahead and throw her shout out out there because I'm proud of anybody that signs up for media. Uh, Jasmine Trice, had, owner of the uh, Cobras, I believe, had wanted to um, to learn how to stream. So I had been working with getting with her. Uh, and I'll just throw this out there. I'm, I'm working on getting with her tomorrow, um, probably 3 to 5 SL-ish somewhere around in there uh, whenever we can get up with her I'm gonna go through the settings and all that open broadcaster but any point right now like really I'll wait until the first person contacts me and says hey I'm interested in this and then whatever time they you know they set then I'll just go broadcasting that time it's like hey if you guys you know want to stream we're gonna go over it we're gonna talk about it eventually I'll try to maybe even put together like an actual streamed video where I can pull up settings um, and do all that but I really want to kind of go over it a few times with people to kind of work out some some great areas on that before we actually go through and we try to record something live but um you know we're not we're yeah you know, it's not just our department the refs you know constantly um there's uh, there's several teams and I'm not going to name them because I don't have the stats in front of me and I wouldn't I wouldn't put anybody on the spot unjustly but there are several teams that are not represented in either the ref or the media group and we're really trying to reach out to those teams um you know because your guys games are staffed so we really need your help and making sure that all the other games are staffed so far we've had a couple of games forfeited because of players guys i'm telling you because most of you if you're newer players and you haven't been around for it i cannot tell you how much it stinks for the players to be there and the game not be able to go off because we didn't have a ref crew or like um you know for the mustangs and and us this past week our game didn't get streamed i can't tell you how aggravating and upsetting that is that the game's over because you really win or lose you most of the time want to go back and watch it uh, you know, and to see just if nothing else, hear people, you know, because just about everybody can make a good play in the game, win or lose or not. And you really want to hear the commentators say, you know, good stuff about your play, and then I there. So, as a media department, that's something that we focus on. Uh, Rasden focuses with the refs. Both of those departments right now are screaming for new people. Um, so, you know, if, if, if there's something out there in the team reps today, if, if you're, you're on a team and you notice that you haven't seen anybody, or even if you're on a team and several people are doing it, we have a lot of fun doing it. We laugh. We joke. It's never it, – it, it doesn't feel like work unless you commentate or stream like five games in one weekend. And then at which point, by the end of the – you're just like, oh, God, I'm tired of this. So – come help that's basically what i'm trying to do reach out to one of us on here we will get you set up i will set up a class if it's just one-on-one -on -one, that's fine but you know whenever like i said whenever i get one person to sign up i'll start really pushing that time and, and so that anybody that's interested can come hang out and do it so there you go well i don't need to say anything else yeah. very nice if you're <laughs> well interested said. let us know and also for those who were in the media group we have i think both 
the, the first two games are completely staffed with commentators. We still need streamers, so um, I know Psych is kind of there if he if he needs to kind of a thing. And I know we're also want to use you know, and get new people in there as well. So as you come, we'll add you to the Facebook group where you can go and add yourself to the um, to the schedule that we have pinned to the top of the Facebook there. So if you're listening and you are a member of the media group and you have not signed up for a game this weekend this is the call for you to do that okay now we will go on to the combatant player of the week um always an exciting point in the show and as tom said if you have any questions feel free to ask them while we do this we will answer a few after the show all right so polling has stopped we're going to go over there we're going to see who won that and tamed ember gets the fan vote there by Eh, about 10 or so so pretty close yep. 10 votes nice so tame's got one like we said the um the nominees are for the panthers caden for the packers jared for the cowboys billy for the yellow jackets the one who's already got a vote for himself is tamed and i had to go and look make sure that i didn't screw that up again and for the falcons <laughs> it is jambo gant so all right we'll start with Tom, we'll work our way down. So far, Tamed has won, and we'll see if maybe we can avoid any sort of um, any sort of tie here. But we have oh Wolf and Death Sheep with us, so that's two more possible votes that we have to break this tie. We need to have it. <laughs> so, okay, Tom, who do you think? Well, you know, we, we when we discussed doing this in the beginning, we discussed, um, you know, the player that should be nominated or that should be given player of the week is one of those impact players that if you remove them from the game, the game would have been drastically different. Um, and, and my vote, I'm going to get in trouble for this one. Um, <laughs> I am. Um, you know, my... My vote is gonna have to go with uh, go with Billy just just for the sheer fact is <laughs> just for the sheer fact that if you removed him from the game, you know it it would it would have been a completely different game. And the reason I can't I can't go with can't go with K, I didn't see the game, so sorry guys. But um, you know, like I said, if if you remove Billy from that from that equation of that game. Um, I fully am 100% confident that the Patriots would have won that game. Good stuff. Nice reasons. Uh, my uh, vote will go uh, with Jared. Week after week after week, we talk about the Packers. Week after week after week, we say, where are you at? Psych brings milk cartons to the Power Ranking Show saying that the <laughs> offense is missing. <laughs> well, this week... It may not have been the entire game, but at the end, come from behind victory, Jared led his team to the win in an upset over the Eagles, because I picked the Eagles to win. I didn't think that the Packers would do it. And hey, I've been calling you out. People have been calling you out. You answered. You responded. You came through when your team needed you to. Made the plays. Everyone came together. Jared was a nominee for his team. Jared's going to get it for the Packers from me. Excellent job there. You know, we'll start again next week asking where your offense is or something. But this week, congratulations. So, Jared is getting my vote. What do you think, Syke? Uh, sorry, I'm calling somebody's mom, apparently. Um, according to the signs back there. And, Lord, you guys, can we take them with us next week, by That's the way? Fine. Before they can I'm... come every week. I mean, it doesn't have to just stay. Oh, jeez. Um, have, uh, have some pulse groupies with us. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, right. Um, golly, I am so torn between the guys that y'all have voted for um no disrespect to to team's performance on the field but i mean i've been wrestling with y'all's two arguments exactly that y'all have said so far um uh i you know and k k had a great performance but i feel like k is going to get to you know she's going to get her reward at the next peers reunion you know, whatever she's hanging out with Marlo. So, um, you know, she's going to, she's going to, she's going to get her due. Um, golly, I really, not fun being the pressure guys. I, look, I live oh, for pressure. My mom. I live for pressure. Good to know. It's, like, it's down wrong. between, apparently it's coming down. <laughs> to to me guys. or Tom one calling that guy, that girl's mom. Uh, that's what <laughs> it's coming down to. Um, Oh my God. Um, <laughs> This is the best. 
You know what? It, it, they were, we're both one upsets. One, one they were the both upsets, that. too. That's the thing. Jared's yep. team jumped up and took somebody out I didn't think they could. The Cowboys team jumped up, took somebody else I thought they could. Last week we were debating giving out two. Would this not be the perfect week to do that? Um, nope. No, we if, we did, if we week. didn't do it last week. All right, we fair enough. We didn't do it any of the last three weeks. Fair set here time. enough. We're not doing it for this one. All right. Oh, my God. Um, you know what? In the clutch moments, fourth quarter, God, I, I'm i going to go Packers. I'm going to go Jared for this one. All righty. No tie. First time in three weeks. We haven't had. <laughs> we have not had a tie. But congratulations to everybody who was nominated Caden from the pack from the Panthers excuse me Jared from the Packers and who is your um we have people dropping in your combatant <laughs> player of the week um, will be Jared so Jared contact Cam or Cam will get with you somebody will get with you um as we just had a freaking military just a World in on top of trooper dropping yeah, in just dropping in. Damn, Billy we pissed the, somebody off <laughs> yeah Billy from the Cowboys um uh, also Exit deserving. It, left. It, it's one of those things where if the Packers wouldn't have come back like they did, then Billy would have won this thing. So, Billy, if you're mad at anybody, if you're mad at Jared for leading his team to a victory at, <laughs> at the end of the game. But congratulations, both of you guys. Like you said, it, it, was, it was tough. It, and that's who it was down for me, too. Um, but I've called the Packers out, and whenever you respond, I have to just I have to tip my hat to you. So, are, we not, are we not giving love a vote? No, it's not Todd. <laughs> Yeah, but they could change it. We 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 only got we only got. We're not doing this, extending this show for forty five minutes because Tom wants to do this. No, when the host have, if it's not a tie, when we're done, it's over. I ain't doing this no more. Done. But anyways, Tane, great job for the Yellow Jackets and Jambo. We didn't talk about him, but Jambo Gant had a tremendous game. He did. for the Falcons. It's just we expected that to happen kind of a thing um but congratulations to to all of those who were nominated and hey we might not give you cleats but we'll give you a t-shirt right so yep. with t-shirts. Let's <laughs> everybody with a t-shirt, a t-shirt up front I almost won cleats you know it'll say something funny like that on it but you know but congratulations to everybody like we said um you know if you want to commentate ref get in contact with you know me um psych or tom for commentating streaming refing um contact uh, Rasden and McAndrews looks like Snoop Dogg now, um, <laughs> but uh, a great week or a, a good, a nice short week um, of games. A uh, Packers Dolphins Friday, Mustangs Eagles Saturday, Cobras Titans on Monday. Enjoy your Easter weekend if your team is playing. Yep, and we do luck. have a couple questions. Oh, we do have a. I forgot. Yep, we, we do have some questions. Any. Go ahead. All right. Well. Uh, Got our first question here from Kimmy Pons in the uh, UFL live stream. She said, if a team on the UFL site says they have an extra win or loss, even though they haven't played that game yet, who does that team contact? And I, I'm pretty sure the best person to reach out would be the player rep, the UFL player rep, which is yep. Darian Humphreys. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, so get in, get, in ton, get in contact with Darian. I believe his display name is Captain America, uh, but you can you can find his information in the UFL or Kimmy. I can give you his uh, his calling card. That you can that way you can contact him. Uh, let's see, we've got another question. <laughs> is Psych single? Oh God, that's a complicated issue. Um... <laughs> that's a yes, but he doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> and then, uh, so the next one is uh, <laughs> from one of the 27 Lieutenant Dan's Coke or Pepsi, guys? Coke. Oh. Coke. Oh. Uh, Pepsi's just a weird taste. Cream cream soda. Y'all are both wrong. Yeah, but who oh, makes yeah. the cream soda? Dude, just oh. about any cream soda I'd take over Coke <laughs> or Pepsi. It's hard to mess cream well, soda. I don't, I don't drink either one. I drink you know, yeah. like Coke Zero. Oh, I can't that's stand what, Coke Zero. Coke is my and then mode. we've we've got a math question, and I'm not going to answer that one because we're all Southern. Oh, throw it out here. I can handle it. Here we go. What is the square root of three? Square root of three is a cross somewhere between one and two. Well, it's not a it's not a perfect <laughs> number. I mean, here's the thing: square root of one is one. The square root of four is two. So you've picked a number right in between there. Uh, going offhand, I'm going to say it's about one. Square root of three, one point three four ish. 
Now I'm going to hit the calculator and see how close I, I came. 1.73. All right. Well, I was off point three. <laughs> yeah, Whatever. I, 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 <laughs> That's all good. No fail, clue. You just missed that question on your own exam. <laughs> what? No. No. That's pretty close. Point three? Not three. Point three. I know. I understand, but I'm just saying, like, do you, I mean, if they don't put the exact number, I mean, what's what's your what's your leeway you give to your students? Um, I would have accepted that answer. Okay. <laughs> All right. But anyways, we're talking about math. This isn't even football related. It's late. Let's go to bed. Late oh God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to the Bills. Thank you to the Shining Starlets. Tune in this weekend. Game start tomorrow <laughs> night. You'll see me and Tom on the field. Um, All right, we got one more question coming in. Oh, okay. See. I'm trying so hard, guys. Oh no, I don't think it's for the. I don't think it's for the show. Oh, okay. no, it's not for the show. Okay, not for the show. Okay. I'm like, I can't awesome. ask that question on oh, here. All right, well, anyway, oh boy. <laughs> Tom Bach, Psych Chocolate, <laughs> Love and DS. They're over there. They're together. They're mingling around. I'm Matt. We're at the Bills. Starlets, thank you. We will see you guys next Thursday. Tune in this weekend for some great football action. Have a great Easter. If we don't hear from you, yep. we will see you guys next and time on the Pulse. We will be at the Cowboys next week. I already got that plan. I'm man, I'm learning yep. stuff. Yeah, and if, stuff if at any point between now and then you guys want a Pulse shirt, um, hit us up. I believe all the hosts have them and yeah, can give those up. out. So yep, yep, yep. You don't have we have the Cowboys next week, but nobody lined up after that. So oh, continue cool. Continue to hit me up. Let me know, and we'll continue on with our tour around. The UFL. You guys have a great night. We'll see you later. Yep, yep. Good night. Good night. Second life.